All right, so I, I made it. I made it to Ghana. A quaba. <laughs> now, I, I've seen you, I mean, probably at least more than a year or two. At least. Or, or, or more than that because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a few groups online that we were, or a lot of us are part of, and, mm -hmm. you know, we see each other from time to time. Mm -hmm. And then you had the group, the crew that was on in the, in the U.S., like me, I was in the U.S. at one time. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I was, I saw you over here at that time or maybe you came to visit. But how are we? We're both here now. We're both here. Thank God. So, so how long have you been living here? In Ghana, um, this is, we're going in about three years, three and a half years, something like that. About three and a half years? Mm -hmm. Okay. And how has it been? It's been challenging, but good. You it's know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to turn back uh, at all. Yeah. But just trying to meet the challenges that, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's, you know, mm -hmm. common to mm -hmm. any environment and right. the ones that are specific to this environment. So. Man, we just had a deep conversation back there. We're just going to jump right into this Illuminati. Right, let's go. The horse, let's go. And what's taking place in America. I mean, let's go. you know, it's always been a place of suffering for us. Uh, absolutely. And a lot of other people, too. I've been to Cape Coast um, Castle today. A couple of weeks ago, we were in uh, at Gore Island, Ooh. and that's just a few of the thousands Ooh. of uh, slave posts or torture chambers or torture houses of torture that uh, disperse many, many millions of us throughout the diaspora. And everything happens for a reason. But now we have those descendants back here of our own free will. So that just shows that we're living in a great time. Yeah, we can't complain. Yeah. I mean, they sent us through a place called a door of no return. Uh -huh. And you know, mm -hmm. here we are. We came, we came uh, back. Against all the odds. Right, you right. Know. And you're from Chicago. Yes, yeah, y'all got me on the prayer list. You know what, you know what? <laughs> you know, America, you know, even I'm right. from New Haven, Connecticut. And I was telling you, New Haven, Connecticut is one of the fourth worst cities you know, uh, wow. it's one of the four worst, and that's the home of Yale University. You like Connecticut? They got bodies right, in Connecticut. Right. Isn't I that the home of no intellectual idea. Negroes? Home, I mean, the home of skull and bones. Yes, it is that. You know, and I guess right up under them, they have to have this chaos. They have to. You know, I mean, it's their experiment, and they, you know, what they call it, a project. Mm -hmm. You know, so they have their project going on. But they, they're the project on this planet, <laughs> and, and we're the wise scientists, That's right. you know. So, however, uh, they had their period to do their thing, and they could not do that without the resources, because Africa runs the world, and they came in and colonized and got their, you know, supply lines, taking the resources out to build what right. we see, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and the most precious of the resources with the people. Absolutely. And the free labor. Absolutely. You know, um, however. And to this day, it continues mm -hmm. to be a high value, you know, on what they can force out of us as mm -hmm. far as, you know, our labor and. Mm -hmm. Right. So. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, I, I've seen my, my mom passed away recently. And yeah, um, I've seen my mom, oh, thank you. But I've seen my mom work. And at an early age, I can remember being like eight years old, and you know, my dad was there. He was there. I have uh, five other siblings, but when they had me, they was going to get divorced, and uh, like, and then the, the whole community was like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was no dads there. We all lived with our mom, and our mom usually worked one or two jobs, and we was out there in the streets. And at an early age, you, you know, you're like, this is messed up. You know, where that? <laughs> and you know, that's just the reality uh, there. And it was from the history and the legacy of being brought over as slaves and the families being a man couldn't be a man, you know. So uh, there's many things that have taken place to get us to a point where as Chicago yeah. is a meat grinder, New Haven, Connecticut, yeah. meat grinder, you know, warlike scenarios, warlike. Definitely. You were telling I mean, me a couple of situations. That, you know, yeah, Chicago horrible. Chicago had me to a point where, you know, they call it post-traumatic stress syndrome, but I call it present and persistent stress and trauma syndrome because mm -hmm. that's exactly, 
your life in Chicago. And I mean, I don't know anybody from Chicago at this point that would actively dispute me mm -hmm. on what I'm saying right now. Mm -hmm. It's present and persistent. The anxiety, mm -hmm. um, the the planned and random violence together, mm -hmm. it just leaves you in by such children. a... You said by children and yeah. adults, but how, and by police. Police? Uh, but it's, you said uh, it was a lot. Oh, or, yeah. The, the last time I was there, right? it was it was 9, 10, mm -hmm. 11, 12, 13-year-olds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah running around, they mm -hmm. had guns, and yeah. they was literally robbing people. Yeah. Little, little kids. Know, you know? Know, and, it's, and it's hard to imagine, because you, you, you're 10 or 12 years old, if you steal a car, where are you exactly going to drive it to? You can't even drive. I mean, it's, they, they it's to ridiculous. Do that robbery and, and it's ridiculous. Like, so it's just a mm -hmm. lot of ridiculous things happening in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, the last time I was there, we had a small family gathering. And one of our guests had came back, had showed up from coming practicing at the gun range. Mm -hmm. So they mentioned to the, the group, the party, that they had just came back from the gun range. And do you know, the guests at our little send off party, everybody started pulling out their guns. And this, this was a topic yeah. at our family and yeah, friends yeah, gathering yeah guns all over the table everybody's an I got expert this I got yeah guns. oh this one check this out oh this kind of thing i'm not a gun I'm, right yeah. i'm not an expert you know about weapons in that way mm -hmm. um but i just thought to myself and this this is normal this is normal you know what and uh we have to be very careful because i always say you have to arm yourself arm yourself with knowledge and I come from a background, with uh, a gang background, so I was seeing guns in the 80s. I'm almost 50 now, so we're talking 26, you know, 28 years ago, 30 years ago, when we were really seeing heavy artillery come into the to the community. It I still is. There. I was there. I was it there. It still is. When they, when they brought but the they got, first AK-47s. But that, I, but I it, remember. It, you know, these guns, they're not gonna, you know, they have this book. It's called The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Yeah, I right? read it. You know, everybody's preparing themselves with these weapons, right? Mm -hmm. But if the system fell, you probably starve to death before mm -hmm. you get to use that weapon. The majority of the time, the weapon, when you buy a weapon, they're being used in the house because of disputes within the house. They, they had a video, this father and son was shooting out with each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, guns are not a part of who we are. You know, that's a part of another man's culture. You know. It's true. So. Um, okay. Wow. So, yeah, we were just talking about the uh, persistent um, stressors mm -hmm. from the, the um, violent environment inside of the cities in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were saying how um, if you really look at it, our focus should be on food and other resources right because a lot of times those weapons it, it kind of comes in after the fact and well, you may weapon, not even get to that point well you, you, <laughs> just, you just think you know we're we're largely a reactive populace right. so you know sun tzu also in the art of war it's better to outthink your enemy than it is to outfight them so we have to think, okay, what is it, what are they up to? What are they doing? Okay, they're they're just basically putting us pulling us all together so we it could be a duck shoot, right? Right. Uh so what I gotta do is I have to get out away from there was a video that I watched. It was one of the oldest survivors of the Rosewood attack in South in, in the Carolinas, right? Mm -hmm. And they was like, What would you tell, being that you lived through this and you seen all of this, this mm -hmm. this carnage and everything that took place that night, what would you tell you know, uh, the future generations. She said, you know, never live in a place where your enemy can surround you. Hmm. She said, never live in a place where your enemy can surround you. And in America, we are surrounded 